Today on the channel, I want to talk to you about the new GPS from Qpilot called the Hue 3. Now, in today's video, I'm going to give you guys a quick overview of the GPS itself, talk about some of the changes between it, the Hue 2, and the other GPSs that came before it, and I'm then going to take you through setting it up. Now, we're going to set it up on a cube black, but the process is exactly the same for a cube orange, cube yellow, or pretty much any other autopilot that there is out there as well. Now, before I get into this video, I just wanted to thank the guys over at 3dxr in the uk it would not have been possible to make this video without their support they very kindly sent me over the here three to have a play with and it's going to allow me to actually do this video for you in a future video i'm going to be actually showing you the here three in combination with the here plus using rtk and i'll talk a bit more about that as this video goes on but i will be releasing that one in the future as well anyway let's get on with this video and take a look at the new Hue 3 itself. So to take a closer look at the Hue 3, overall its shape and size is very similar to the Hue models that have come before, but there are some big changes under the hood. Externally, you will notice the biggest change is that the safety switch has now gone. Just to be clear, there is no safety switch built into the Hue 3. If you do want to continue to use a safety switch with your autopilot, you will need to use an external one. Now the cube does come with a safety switch in the pack and it is this little wiring thing here so if you did want to continue to use one you can use that however in my opinion i don't like using the safety switch at all because it has the potential to shut down the motors in flight should something go wrong with it and my personal opinion is that the safety switch should be disabled further over on the gps there is an all new design on the leds as well which are much easier and brighter to see and because that safety switch is gone on, it is now water resistance which means you can use it in much worse weather conditions than we were able to use it before moving over internally there are some big changes as well and the biggest of these is the module that is using it is now using the m8p chipset from ublox which means it is rtk rover compatible out the box now the amazing thing about this is that you are getting rtk rover compatibility for the price of a standard gps unit there is no longer a built-in barrow sensor but it does have an stm32 f3 cpu built in and it does have a compass built in just like we would expect now, just like the later batches of the Hue 2 GPS, the Hue 3 uses CAN bus as standard and it is pre-wired from the factory to use the CAN connector on your autopilot. Now, this can either be the CAN 1 or CAN 2 and I'll take you through setting that up on your autopilot in a minute as well. Something else I have also seen mentioned on CAN bus is people asking, can you actually use a splitter or an adapter with this to be able to get multiple inputs or outputs? And whilst there are two cam ports on the cube autopilot there are situations where people might want to use two or three or more of the gps or use other cam devices as well now you can actually use a splitter for cam and the actual reality is you can use the original i2c splitter that was available when you get your autopilot for cam it is using the same four pin connector just something to mention on that though is that if you are using multiple can devices you may need to add an external can power source because the autopilot may not have enough power to be able to supply it now qpilot have released both a puzzle as well as a poster that show this and they actually give you an overview of using that i2c splitter board or the can splitter board as it's now called but also having an external back attached to be able to power additional CAN devices as well. Now, as I said, it is worth taking into account if you are using lots of CAN, you do need to make sure you do have that external power. Now, other than those changes, the Hue 3 is very similar to the other models before it. Now, the next thing we're going to do is actually take you through setting it up. Now, because it is CAN bus, it is very simple and straightforward. You simply plug the CAN connector into the CAN port on your autopilot. You have CAN 1 and CAN 2 available. Now, something I will mention on this is if you do have an early version of your carrier board, you may find that the CAN 1 and CAN 2 ports are actually labeled wrong. CAN 1 is actually the center port and not 
the one on the far right hand side so do check that on your autopilot as you can see on my very early one it's actually labeled the wrong way round however on my later one it is labeled correctly so if you are having issues detecting it do check which cam port you've got it into and then it's worth swapping over now, as I said, what we're going to do now is walk you guys through actually configuring it in Ardra Pilot. There are a few things, though, you do need to know first. A standard with the Cube Autopilot, for instance, can is disabled with the latest firmware. So we will need to enable the CAN ports before we're actually able to get the GPS to be detected. Set the GPS type to CAN make sure that the compass is working and then configure the LEDs for CAN as well. Whereas on the standard traditional serial and I2C type GPSs, you would simply plug it in and it would be detected. The later GPSs that use CAN are not automatically detected in the firmware today. Now, later versions of Ardra Pilot may change this and automatically enable the CAN drivers for you, but we'll walk you through actually doing that now as well. So now we're going to configure the autopilot for the correct settings to work with the CAN GPS. Now, there are a number of settings we need to change. The first is actually enabling the CAN bus ports. The second is then telling the autopilot that we're using a CAN based GPS. The third is that we need to enable the CAN based LEDs and then the fourth is to do the compass configuration. Now the first thing we need to do is enable those CAN drivers. So we need to connect our autopilot to the computer. As you can see I do have the CAN GPS already plugged in and it is in that middle port which means that is CAN 1. Regardless of what the labeling on the QBlack says that port is the CAN 1 port. Now the autopilot has connected, you can see that it is showing no GPS because it isn't enabled yet. So to do this, we're going to go into config. We're going to go into the prams list, and I prefer to actually do it this way. And the first thing we need to do is enable the CAN port. So if you search for CAN underscore, do a search for that. And what you're looking for is CAN underscore P1 driver and CAN underscore P2 driver. These are the options to turn on the two CAN bus ports on our autopilot. As I'm connected to CAN 1, I simply need to turn the first one on. So we change that from a zero to a number one to enable it. We then click right prams. The next thing we need to do is then change the GPS mode so we know that it's going to look for a CAN based GPS and not a serial one. So I'm going to again use the search function and search for GPS underscore. And we can now scroll down and what we're actually looking for is GPS underscore type. And that will set the type of GPS that we're actually using on the system. So if we scroll all the way down, you can see we got GPS underscore type here. It's currently set to one, which is auto. I set this manually. So what we want to do is set this to CAN bus. So we're looking to, on the list and it is number nine for UAV CAN. So we're simply going to change that to nine. Click right prams. The next thing we're going to change before we reboot the autopilot is the LED settings because we may as well do that now as well. Now the setting for this is NTF underscore LED and you're looking for NTF underscore LED underscore types. If we then click on this, it gives us all of the options for LEDs and you can see that there is one here for UAV CAN. So we simply need to enable that, click close and write the prams. The next thing we need to do before any of this will work is reboot the autopilot. Now you can do this by disconnecting the USB or alternatively we will simply go control F to bring up the temp menu and I will reboot the autopilot from here on the computer. Now the autopilot is rebooted, you can see that we have the LEDs flashing on the here three. You can also see that the GPS now says 
3D fix because it is now picking up a correct GPS signal and you then should have the vehicle appear on the side over here to show you that you are actually connected with your GPS coordinates located at the bottom of the screen. Now the final thing we need to do is configure the internal compass and this is actually fairly straightforward. In the latest version of Audra Pilot alongside Mission Planner, compass configuration for Canvas is much simpler. We simply click on setup, click on mandatory hardware, click on compass and you will now see this new list at the top here which will give us the option to select which compass we want to be the priority. Now you can see currently we've got priority 1, 2 and 3 and 1 and 2 is taken up by SPI. These are internal compasses within the Q Black Autopilot. What we really want is for the UAV CAN compass, which is this one here, number three, to be the top priority. So what we're going to do is simply click on the up, the up, and put the UAV CAN compass to the top of the list. You can also see here that it shows you it as ticked as external, so we know that it is actually picking it up correctly. Now we can actually have a look down here as well and you can actually tell it what compasses you want it to use in the sense do you want it to use just one compass, two compasses or three compasses. Now most of the autopilots only have a single internal compass, the cube black actually has two but the cube orange and cube yellow only have one so you wouldn't have the multiples showing under SPI. If you did want to delve into what actual hardware you had a little bit more you can actually click on the hardware ID tab and this will actually show you all of the devices connected via their buses. So you can see the two internal compasses. We've got Compass Dev and ID and now Dev ID 2, which are SPI. And then we've got the UAV CAM one as well. So that tells us which ones are connected via the buses on board the autopilot. And that is the here three configured and ready to go. And you would then simply perform your compass calibrations and any other set of calibrations as you normally would with Ardra Pilot. One last thing I just wanted to quickly mention was regarding that safety switch. Now, as I said, the here three doesn't have one. So you either will need to use the external or you will need to change a few settings to make sure that you can actually arm the aircraft. The most important ones are the bird underscore safety enable or BRD underscore safety enable. This is the option that tells the aircraft to be completely disarmed and beeping and flashing when you first turn it on. You've then got some other settings like bird safety option, safety mask, as well as the actual arming checks as well and you will need to reconfigure these if you are not using a safety switch at all. So for instance if I wasn't using a safety switch I would select the main op prams and the options I wanted to be checked but leave off that hardware safety switch. I would then set the bird underscore safety enable to zero. That way that is disabled and we would then simply write the prams and that way we would actually be able to arm the aircraft without having that physical safety switch attached. Okay, so as you can see, something's changed a little bit, and that is because I'm recording this bit the next day. Now, the last thing I want to talk about on this is the stand for the Here 3. Now, the guys at Cube Pilot have released a 3D printable stand option. It's a file where you can download it and print your own one, and that is the version that I've got here. Now, the way it works, it simply screws onto the bottom of the autopilot. It has a built-in plastic shaft and a base connector as well, and that allows you to mount the autopilot to whatever vehicle you're going to put it on. Now I will say I have done a slightly edited version of this and I'll post an STL for that on Thingiverse as well as I'll share it in the description of this video too. I just found that their design was perfect but it was quite awkward to 3D print so I've made a couple of little changes and I've also thickened the diameter of the shaft internally so the walls are thicker I should say so that it does actually have a bit more strength and it doesn't wobble quite as much but I will put a link to both the original healing stand option as well as the modified one that I've done in the description of this video as well. Now that is it for setting up the Hue 3. In the next video for this I will be talking about doing it with RTK and I'll actually show you it with the Here Plus base station as well. Now, as I said at the start of this video, today's video would not have been possible without the support of Cube Pilot.
tablet but 3dxr in the uk as well if you are looking to get yourself a hue 3 a cube autopilot or anything to build yourself a drone or aircraft please do check them out there is a link to them in the description of this video as well that is it for this one Thank you for watching. If you found it useful, please do hit that subscribe button. Please do check out the links. And if you'd like to support us by Patreon, there are links to that as well in the description too.